<laughs> hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg, and today I'm going to talk about the man who invented high-end audio. His name is Harry Pearson. He had a magazine called The Absolute Sound. It started, I guess, in the mid-1970s. I think I started reading it a few years later in 77, 78. And it was a revelation to me that this world of high-end audio, cost no object audio, people who were passionate about making great audio, people who were passionate about writing about it, like Harry Pearson, people who were selling it, like dealers, high-end dealers, pre-internet and the people who bought it people who were buying high-end audio so these these four sides to this story the the writing side the uh, the engineering side the selling side and the buying side they all came together at the absolute sound and there was stereophile at that time but I, I wasn't really paying that much attention to stereo stereophile this is in the pre John Atkinson uh, Jay Gordon Holt day. this was the Jay Gordon Holt era of stereophile didn't didn't really grab me honestly, but Harry's writing just made it so fascinating. You just want he wrote a review and you wanted this thing. At least if you wanted to hear it, you need to experience what Harry heard. He heard soundstage. He created this thing called soundstage, which wasn't just stereo imaging from left to right. It was depth and space and instruments appearing in front of each other or behind each other in, in a real acoustic space in a recording he, he it was mind expanding the way Harry wrote about it he t wrote about transparency like hearing things in an immediate way that you're hearing direct back through the recording to the source to the recording session he, he created these words the lexicon of high-end audio uh, and and made it palpable made people interested and fascinated and wanting to get more and more music out of their grooves. Again, this is pre-digital time, so basically most people were playing LPs. Uh, so getting more information out of those grooves with better cartridges and better tone arms and better turntables and better phono preamps, it just went on and on and on. But Harry was an amazing writer. Now, The Absolute Sound, by the way, still exists. The magazine is, is still around. Harry Pearson departed the magazine a long time ago, and he departed the planet a few years ago. And uh, he is missed because he is really the godfather of high-end audio journalism, absolutely positively. And uh, he was a big influence on me. I briefly worked for Harry. Um, I did a column in The Absolute Sound called Vinyl Rules, which was not exactly writing, it was making lists and describing new vinyl <clears throat> that was coming out. That was in, uh, I'd say, 1997 or so. So even in 97, people were saying, oh, vinyl's over, Turn, you know, digital's going to just stomp all over vinyl, it'll be gone soon. So I said, hey, I want to write this column called Vinyl Rules and proving that there were still great LPs coming out in the late 1990s. So I had some few experiences uh, with Harry. Um, we went to see... Um, King Crimson, the rock band, at uh, the Beacon Theater in New York together. And uh, he was, talk about a curmudgeonly guy, he was not uh, warm and friendly. But he was, uh, he made it all happen, right? In other words, I'm, I'm, I'm almost saying that if Harry wasn't there, Harry didn't exist, High End Audio would have happened anyway, but I don't think it would have had the momentum that it had because Harry was driving sort of the market. Now, of course, dealers are responsible for selling this stuff, uh, and uh, they had to step up and do their part, but some of that demand was coming from, from Harry Pearson, and later on also from, from Stereophile. So, um, Harry was a big deal, and uh, from the absolute sound, I went on to write for many, 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 other publications and then writing on the internet but it all started with the absolute sound for me as a reader and then writing for him briefly about a year year and a half or so and um wherever you are harry thanks thanks for uh, thanks for the memories and i'll see you guys very very soon